So in this video, we'll discuss about the three hinged arc. Okay, three hinged arc and three hinged arc and uh, more furtherly we'll discuss about the parabolic arch for circular arch we'll discuss in the next video okay parabolic arch so in parabolic arch let me take a arch okay three inch arc so three hinged arc three hinged arc of a span l and a central rise of h okay of central rise h uh, this is the condition of supports at same level okay h being the horizontal thrust and r a r b being this vertical support reaction at support a and b respectively so with this uh, we need to know some formulae so uh, so y for at any distance x okay for at any distance x suppose let us consider this point d and c being the crown point uh, y this okay at any section at a distance x y is equal to 4 h x by l square l minus x okay so this is the formula for y so with uh, by finding value of y for finding value of y what we know uh, is now what we need is the value of theta okay so tan theta is equal to it is always dy by dx so we can di uh, differentiate this equation and we get 4h by l square l minus 2x okay so this is the formula for determining theta so another formula here we need is to find uh, after finding reaction okay as usual the static equilibrium equation we can find ra and rb then we will take a moment about this hinge either at the right support or left portion so then we will get the horizontal thrust horizontal thrust so we will determine r a r b and horizontal thrust with this now we can calculate the bending moment shear force uh, normal thrust radial thrust at any section of the arch so this is the simple starting process concept okay now let's go to a numerical now so this is the equation we are provided with uh, uh, okay let me read out the equation a three hinge parabolic arch hinged at the support and crown has a span of 24 meter and a central rise of 4 meter it carries a concentrated load of 50 kilonewton sorry of 50 kilonewton at a distance of 18 meter from the left support and uniformly distributed load of intensity 30 kilonewton per meter at the left half portion of the arch so determine the moment thrust and radial shear at a distance 6 meter from the left support so this is the question okay we have to find uh, bending moment radial thrust and normal thrust at 6 meter from left support So we have to find this okay now the very first step as i have said we have to find the horizontal reaction vertical reaction at the support so considering this as a beam okay simply supported beam it will have so this being the central span a central point c and a 50 kilonewton load is acting this 12 meter 18 meter and the whole span being 24 meter the reaction here at a r a and r b we can calculate the reaction by applying the static equilibrium condition so taking moment about a clockwise positive we can calculate the value for r b so this 5 30 kilonewton per meter okay acting clockwise so 30 into 12 into it will be acting at half span 12 by 2 plus 50 kilonewton also acting in clockwise direction at a distance of 18 meter rb acting in anti-clockwise direction at a distance of 24 meter i'll get the value for rb now 
13 to 12 into 12 2 plus 15 to 18 divided by 24 so the value is 127.5 so rb is equal to 127.5 kilo newton applying another static equilibrium condition that is fy is equal to zero vertically upward positive we have ra and rb in upward direction and the uniformly distributed load as a uh, downward direction so 30 multiply this span give the load plus uh, so minus 50 is equal to zero so ra will be is equal to 282.50 meter so this is the required uh, support reaction R A is equal to 282.5 and R B is equal to 127.5 so now let us look at this figure uh, the third step what we can do is we take moment about C left or right as of your consideration but in this case I will take for the right part right portion because there isn't uh, uniformly distributed load so it will be easier to calculate with the point load so that is the simple trick you can apply uh, just take the portion which has less load so mc right portion is equal to zero clockwise positive so as we said horizontal thrust will be acting at the support so for which we can calculate h multiplied by 4 clockwise s multiplied by 4 50 is acting minus or plus plus clockwise plus 50 multiply by this direction 24 18 so this span will be 6 50 multiply by 6 and vertically force is acting that is 127.5 so minus 127.5 multiply by this distance being 12 meter is equal to 0 so what I get h is equal to 127.5 multiplied by 2 bell minus 15 to 6 divided by 4 307.5 okay 307.5 kilonewton which is the horizontal thrust so h is calculated now the very first part of this numerical is calculated that is calculation of reaction now the next step is to determine bending moment uh, radial thrust normal thrust at this section so why to take a look at the unnecessary portion we just look at the required portion that is 6 meter from the left so considering the portion 6 meter from the left support that means the horizontal vertical reaction here at a support is 282.5 the horizontal support 307.5 make sure the horizontal support is always towards the arch okay towards the arch and a uniformly distributed portion okay the excess portion is not considered only this 6 meter portion of the UDL is considered so it being a uh, 30 kilo Newton meter okay so this is the a let me name this as D so this is not hinge just a point okay this is not a hinge so we have to find maximum bending moment at D radial thrust and normal thrust at point D so for which what we do is with all the value known we can take the moment okay so it is bending moment bending moment at D is equal to the force from the left part left portion okay just considering this so 282 gives a sagging that is a happy face okay you can see so it is positive 282.5 multiply by this distance 6 307.5 so it will be minus 307.5 minus this h let us consider this as y dash plus minus uh, 30 span is 6 meter and it will be acting at the midpoint so 3 so I didn't calculate a y dash at first okay so to make you clear y dash we have the formula at any point of at any section x we can calculate y using the formula y is equal to 4 h x by l square l minus x 
so at this point we have h as uh, 4 multiply by we have h as 4 meter x as 6 meter okay divided by l square the span is 24 square multiply by l 24 minus x 6 so h is equal to y is equal to 3 meter okay so 3 meter now just substitute that value then we'll get moment at d 282.5 multiply by 6 minus 307.5 multiply by y dash that is 3 minus 30 into 6 into 3 we get 232.5 which is the required value for bending moment at a section 6 meter from left support 232.5 kilo newton meter okay so this is the required value for bending moment at section 6 meter from the left support just to make a clear concept about the radial thrust so considering this portion okay just uh, this portion in this direction which acts okay just uh, in this direction and this is normal thrust and which acts perpendicular to this normal thrust it is radial thrust okay make a clear concept it will surely make an angle theta with the horizontal normal thrust radial thrust now you will have vertical reaction and a horizontal reaction okay and this at this particular point horizontal thrust will be at the opposite direction to resolve to uh, balance out and similarly vertical force will be acting now resolving this okay resolving this in terms of nt and rt that is radial thrust and normal thrust normal thrust is equal to so taking this as a normal okay this normal it makes an angle theta with the normal thrust that h so h cos theta plus okay it is acting towards the so make let me make you clear i'm considering normal thrust and radial thrust as no, uh, the normal lines okay and it makes an angle theta with the h and vertically acting this also makes an angle theta okay so resolving in terms of normal thrust normal thrust is equal to h cos theta both are in the same direction so it is positive and resolving this v this is also acting in the same direction so plus v sine theta similarly for radial thrust rt okay for rt in uh, resolving in terms of rt what we get v cos theta obviously okay it is acting downward the vertical force v is also acting downward so positive but when we resolve this uh, horizontal okay horizontal we resolve in terms of rt we get in opposite direction okay so it becomes minus h sine theta okay Again, coming back to this, what we had here, 208, as I have said, 307, so resolving in the horizontal terms, 307.5, because there is no any other force acting in this horizontal direction, but in case of vertical support, uh, UDL is acting downward, so 282.5 acting vertically upward and 30 kN per meter load intensity of UDL acting downward, so 282.5 minus 30 multiply by the span of UDL 6 which is 102.5 positive so this suggests the excess force is acting vertically downward okay so when we add this two that is th plus 30 into 6 it should be equal to the upward force so with this force equal to V and this is equal to H and we have already uh, got the value and we have formula 
okay nt is equal to h cos theta and rt is equal to so where is the theta how it can be calculated so basically a simple formula tan theta is equal to dy by dx slope uh, we have the value of dy uh, y for hx l square l minus x so differentiating with respect to x, x we get 4h by l square l minus 2x so theta is equal to tan inverse tan inverse 4h by l square l minus 2x substitute the value uh, 4h 4 meter divided by span 24 multiply by l minus 2x 24 minus 2x 2 into 4 2 into x means 6 so 12 tan inverse we get the required value which is 18.43 degree so this is the value for theta now with value of theta h and v we are now able to calculate normal thrust and radial thrust so let me do it over here normal thrust is equal to h cos theta plus v sin theta okay h so this will be the normal thrust and this will be the radial thrust making an angle theta with the horizontal we can put out the value so h here is 307.5 cos 18.43 plus v is equal to 102.5 sin 18.43 make sure v is vertically downward if the uh, if v is vertically upward then you have to change the sign that will be minus v okay so on putting this value we get a uh, normal thrust as 324.133 kilonewton okay and radial thrust okay radial thrust is equal to v cos theta minus h sin theta substituting the value as v 102.5 cos 18.43 minus 307.5 sin 18.43 okay we get this value as 102.5 cos 18.43 307.5 sin 18.43 so it is nearly equal to zero okay so this is the process how we solve a three hinged arc okay i hope you have understood any queries do comment and do subscribe us for another video coming out